views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. And good morning, everybody, and welcome to Open, the show that opens up the Bronx and the world to you. I'm your host, the Dr. Bob Lee from 107.5 WBLS and Channel 67's Open. We've got a fantastic show lined up for you today. Coming up on today's show, we'll take a look at an event working to help us plan, vision, and execute goals. Plus, we'll get tips on understanding credit and how that ties into home ownership. Watch out. And then we'll find out about a program working to empower youth and share their message that the future is female. What? And then after that, Bobby C. has the latest news in the world of sports. And then it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and uh, we'll check out an event filled with dancing with the goal of a cure. Then later on, We'll discover a new coalition saying no to bullying. All that more is headed your way. We're open. I'm your host, the Dr. Bob Lee, and you're watching Open, the only live interactive program that brings the Bronx and New York City straight to your TV set. Stay connected to us through social media at BronxNet TV. Now, leading things off in October, right on the 13th, right? Yes. October 13th, an event will take place creating vision boards, planning life for the next year. Yes. Are you ready for it? I am ready. Joining us with all the details, we have organizer Tanika Beloved. You are loved. Welcome yes. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you for bringing your love. Thank Tell you. Tell us about your organization. Well, um, a vision board. I'm having a vision board party mm -hmm. um, on October 13th. It is a um, celebration of ideas. Mm -hmm. We all know that um, success starts from just a mere thought. Yes. Yes. And um, so we're just putting it on a board. Um, right here I have my uh, vision board I created last year. And uh, it actually has um, so many things mm -hmm. that I have uh, wanted to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And I have done that already. Um, I have a book coming out this sure. year. Uh -oh. And I'm excited about it. Uh, the book is called Cooking with Love, Lost the Battle, Won the War. It's an uh, inspirational cookbook. Cooking with Love, Lost the Battle, Won the War. Yes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. An so, inspirational cookbook. An inspirational cookbook. All right, so we'll explain that. Well, four years ago, I was in a car accident, a devastating mm -hmm. car accident, and I was almost paralyzed from the neck down. Mm -hmm. um, I had multiple surgeries, and along with that, I was dealing with uh, marriage woes. Mm -hmm. And um, I, it led, actually led to my bottom, my rock bottom, me hitting my bottom. Um, I tried to commit suicide. And so after the divorce and... Um, so all kinds of negative things were happening to you in your life. Yes. It was like a way of thinking, and when you thought that, all of these things connected, right? Yes, absolutely. But it's, then something switched off and turned on. Yes. And you kicked it up a notch. I kicked it up a notch. I started thinking positive. Absolutely. I went to a vision board party last year, and that's um, what that's started what my idea. journey. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so after the vision board party and um, after me starting my journey, I decided that I wanted to... Um, help others. So I started a coaching business myself. Oh, go ahead, girl. Yes. Can I get a high five? Across the table. Uh, <laughs> now, wait a minute. How does this vision board help you out and how can it help others? Well, if you visualize it, then you materialize it. Uh oh. So if you think it, you become it. 
Yeah. And absolutely, if you believe in yourself and have faith, and um, it's a way of planning for your future, and um, you can... Yeah. Yeah. And you could probably sleep better at night too because you take everything, take your dreams and everything, and put it on a paper, put it absolutely, on the vision board. Absolutely, absolutely. This is what I'm thinking about doing. Yep. Then you uh, prioritize and say, let me do this first, that, and knock it out, right? Yes, absolutely. Most of the things on here I've already started to do, like I've had hair and makeup mm. that I wanted to get into. Um, in real life, I'm a chef. Oh, so. okay. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Let's set up the next set over there and I'll get the cooking thing going. Too. Absolutely. Yeah. I would love to cook you something. So in real life, I'm a chef. Uh -huh. So what better way to have a cookbook come out? And I envisioned that. And that's what I wanted Where to do. Where is it on there? It's right here. See? Uh, uh, when yeah, I grow yeah. up, I want to be a chef. When I grow up, I want to be a chef. Absolutely. Yeah. Book is here. Uh -huh. And um, my name is Love. So uh -huh. I definitely... Um, Wanted to it incorporate right that. In. Cooking with love. Absolutely. So I'm excited <laughs> like about that. Um, the vision board party is October 13th, mm -hmm. and it's right here in the Bronx. I lived in the Bronx for a number of years. I live in Connecticut now, but I lived in the Bronx for a number so of years. So you just moved to the upper Bronx, um, Connecticut. Yeah, <laughs> basically, because a lot of people from the Bronx do uh -huh. move to Connecticut. Yeah. I grew up in Harlem. But what I wanted to do was have um, it uh, easily accessible to mm -hmm. most of the people that I know. So I made sure that I put it in the Bronx, and um, it's on 100 Van Cortland Park South. 100 Van Cortland? Yes, it's in a community center. It's okay. October 13th, and it's from 4 to 7. All you have to do is bring magazines, you bring... Um, your scissors and your, um, <coughs> you bring your magazine, your scissors. And the things that you think you want to do. And things that you think that yeah. you want to do on there, and I'll provide the rest. And the bonus is I'll have some dishes uh -oh. from my upcoming book. She got the cooking so, the love stuff going on over there. Most of the time people think that like something like this is for women, mm -hmm. but men can do it too, absolutely. Yeah. You want to, you have goals mm -hmm. that you want to achieve, and what better way to do it than to put it on board? <coughs> Excuse me, yeah, of course, and, and plus what it does, it, uh, it reinforces a lot of the things that you want to do. Using your senses, so you can put it down on paper, right? Yes. You can read this. Yes. And then you can say it out loud. It comes out of your mouth. Absolutely. And it goes into your ears. Absolutely. And you're reinforcing what you're doing. Absolutely. And then you're feeling it. You're touching it. Yep. Right? When you think it, you become it. Mm -hmm. so. And then when you, when you hook up those pots and pans and hook up that food. And my food is good, absolutely. I'm telling you. It's really well, you're not going to tell me that your food is bad. No, I wouldn't tell you if it's bad, but it's not. And so I'm not when worried you're about with that. Love, it has to be good. Right? It's always cooking with love. Right. I've yeah. been cooking for years for my family. A lot family. of spices. A lot of spices. You absolutely have to go so shopping for your spices mm. and um, stock up your cabinet. There absolutely. You go. Where can we get more information on what you're doing? Um, you can visit my website, TanikaBelove.com. You can follow me on my Facebook fan page at Miss, M-S, Tanika B. Love. And you can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Tanika B. Love. There you go. Nicen it up, spicing it up. Give Tanika love, be love. A big round of applause, everybody. Yeah. Let it hit you feel it. Go real fast. Go real fast. Let's at home. <laughs> I right, will take a quick break right here. But I promise we'll be back with more next. Next on Open.
And welcome back, everybody. Hey, you know, on October the 6th, the Power of You teams will hold their fifth annual empowerment experience. The Power of You teams. Yes. 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 Joining us with a preview, we have founder and executive director Felicia Gibson Jaycox and co director Ashley McFarlane. This Bowie. says blue up there, but it's Bowie. Bowie, I know. Bowie, Bowie, Bowie. <laughs> Bowie. I get that a lot, don't me. worry. No, no. But you told me, Bowie. Bowie, like a you. floating Bowie. Like the flowing, yeah. 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 That's what I tell my son. That's how he gets it straight. Yeah, like in that movie Jaws and the lady <laughs> yes, holds on exactly. to the Yes, exactly. I'm going to so Tell us about what you do. Tell us about your wonderful works. Yes. Well, first, thank you for having us today. Thank oh, you very much. Very yes, yes. We work with Teen Girls in Harlem. We have a mentoring and empowerment organization I that's like called it. the Power View Teens. Mm -hmm. Our girls are ages 11 to 19, and we inspire girls to be brave, to be bold, to walk in their power. Our mission is just for girls to dream big, to yeah. be confident. Oh, I like it. Age what? 11, 11 to 19. 19. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Covers, wide range. got some girls for covers a yeah. wide range. That helps to mold them. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Originally, we thought we would work with girls at age 13, but what we're finding is if we get them earlier, yeah, yeah. yes, we They're can ready. help them a lot more. Yeah. They're ready. That's just like how Jackson's Talented Teens International Contest. Yeah, absolutely yes. right. Uh, with the Youth Development Foundation, they dealt the same age. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. It, yes. What, we found, age. what we found with the young girls is even... At the teenage, like 15, 16, we're too late. Yeah. Yes. Um, by the time they're probably about actually nine or ten, they've already established what they're thinking, how they want to pursue yeah, their lives, yeah. and we, if we can catch them as early as possible, just to get into tap into what they think they are, mm -hmm. yes. so that we can shape and mold what they should think they are. Uh, yeah, I know <laughs> exactly what you mean. We're in a, a better lot of times place. I speak in different places, like in auditoriums of different schools. Yes. Yeah. And when I do a junior high school or elementary school, you know, they're still gonna do what they're going to do, mm -hmm. but right. in the high school, they yeah. already have oh, yeah. their minds they're made up. Oh, yeah. they're, so I have, to, I have to use quite a different tactic, technique. Yes, the identification absolutely. technique that I call. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. We'll explain a later. But, so uh, you've been doing this for how long? We started in July of 2014, and we yeah. started with about 14 girls in Harlem. Mm -hmm. 14 and, uh, on the 14. Yeah, we started 14 <laughs> on the 14. It's a good number. Yeah. And uh, today we've uh, served over I'm 200 play that. 14, 14. girls. 14, 14. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it worked for us. It, 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 it worked for us. You won. You're winning. Yeah. You're winning. You're winning. By, yeah. year, by year five, um, we, we program year round, which is also unusual for a program like this. We don't yeah. really take any breaks. And every month we have mm. about 40 to 50 young girls come oh, into excellent. our workshops. Yes. It's, yeah. it's amazing. Um, the girls completely connect with one another. We can't even really take credit with, for it anymore. Mm -hmm. um, the energy that's there, there's a there's something that gets a little cliche about sisterhood. Yeah. Um, but there is something when you bring girls together in a safe space and they're allowed to just be themselves. You watch them flourish. You watch them really tap into yeah. who they are. Yes. Did you bring them to the WBLS Circle of Sisters Saturday? We did. You yes. did? <laughs> we, were, we, were <laughs> we were there. Oh, we were absolutely wow. there. <laughs> And we just did a program this summer that was called our Path to Power program, uh -huh. which was a six-week empowerment series for girls. Mm -hmm. And it was just, oh, right. it was amazing. It's we phenomenal. were able to introduce girls to some wonderful careers in science, technology, entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, yes, yes. People it, ask us all the time, like, well, well, what is your, what's your trick to this? And to be quite honest with you, it's very simple. If you love people and mm -hmm. if you give them an opportunity to speak and you hear them yes. and listen to them and then provide what they're seeking, they will shine. And you just allow the place for them you to do it. You see what you said? If you love if people. You love. That's it. It's all just about love. love. Yeah. It's, it's about love. All it's about love. And about a lot of love. young girls, unfortunately, in this day and age, they just aren't getting it. And yes. it's no yeah. one's fault. Yeah. Everyone's very busy. This world has become very complicated and chaotic, and young girls are getting lost in the sauce. So we yeah. took it upon ourselves. Absolutely. To. Dr. Bob, we are a mentoring and empowerment organization, but mm -hmm. this organization is a family. It is. Foundation. This is all about I can, love. I can feel what you're yes. saying. <laughs> <laughs> we tell the girls day yes. one, once uh, you're a power girl, you're a power girl for life, and you can't get rid of us. No. The no, power never. girl. Yeah, the power <laughs> girls. <laughs> the power, girl. <laughs> power girls in the house say power ho. Girls. Oh. <laughs> our empowerment experience, October 6th, is actually um, our, um, it's our yes. paramount feature of the program. It's I think it's our, what sets us apart. Annual celebration. It's a day of education oh, yeah. and entertainment, and we're so excited because this year, this Saturday, 
Miss America 2019, uh -oh. yes. Miss Nia Franklin. She's coming. She's, She's coming. coming. Oh. She's coming. She's oh, gonna be go. there. Give them a big She's gonna be there. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Oh, there's a picture right there. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Not only is she coming, but she's also uh -huh. going to deliver our keynote address, and she's going to perform. She actually won Miss America singing opera, so she's yes. going to perform an opera song. Isn't at that the wonderful? It's I mean, incredible. The youngsters have something great to look up to in you guys because you guys set a, a great example. Yes. And you, you put forth a blueprint that they can follow. That's absolutely. And then they let their own personalities yes. and individuality Take it away from there, come out. Yes, sure. yes, But yes. she's going to get up there and do she's a keynote. Gonna now, I'm sure she has keynote. a fantastic message absolutely, for them. Absolutely, absolutely. She does because Miss America, the pageant has really, really changed. It has evolved. This Miss America pageant is called Miss America 2.0. Yeah. And she's the first to win this pageant. And they really, really focus on scholarship now. They focus on social impact, mm -hmm. talent, and empowerment of women. Which so is what that's we're about. Exactly <laughs> what we do. It's a perfect fit. Yes, that's exactly now, what I'm we do. I'm loving what you guys yeah. are doing. Thank our, you. our biggest, our biggest um, what, what we'd love to do is just expose our girls to what and whom they can be. Yes. So bringing someone like Miss America to the table is top notch for yeah. us. It Absolutely. just gives them a visual of what they're dreaming. What do you guys about. tell people um, if they come in and they have low self esteem? Because you can tell they from all yeah. with all the youngsters. They oh, all absolutely. Do. Somebody's not going. Everybody's not going to be the way you want them when they come right. in. No, no, no. It and never. some people have that, you know, that low self esteem, and they, you gotta, yes, you got to boost even, them up a little bit and let them realize a, that, you know. Somebody special. We yes. say we always say our first <clears throat> workshop is the toughest workshop because oh. the girls come in, they're very mild mannered, mm -hmm. they're very timid, they don't want to speak, no one wants to sit up front. Yeah, heads are down. Heads are down. Yes. Everyone's like, Why did they're my mom bring me here? No, yeah. no, 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 from the gate that this is just a space for you guys to be yourselves uh -huh. and we we don't come in with a, a an impressive curriculum and try to oppress them with all this stuff we just let them be and have yeah, fun and yeah. get to meet and greet oh, each other beautiful. they loosen up and they just they open flourish. up yeah, yeah they flourish Absolutely. within like an hour you watch these girls just transform yeah. and so it, recap on the sixth yes 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 yes, yes. Before yes. They wrap you up. so what's gonna happen real quick <laughs> yes day of education entertainment we have inspirational speakers, we have dance teams, we have a STEM workshop, it's technology workshop, we have a back to school fashion show that's gonna feature girls and oh, teens of no. all shapes and packed. sizes. It's and packed. we have a scholarship presentation also. Every year, our seniors that graduate and go into college, we give them Power Girl scholarships. Yes. Uh -huh. So we'll have the presentation as well. And we're gonna do our Power Girl Awards where we award all girls who are just doing something wonderful and powerful in the world. At Riverside Baptist I Church in Harlem. I love it. At Riverside yes. Baptist At Church. And you can get tickets on Eventbrite. Uh, see? <laughs> Is there a website? <laughs> yes. www.thepowerofuteens.org. You can get all the information about our organization and this powerful event. We're going to have a ton of special guests. We have mm. um, we have uh, singers from Erica Badu and yes. Lenny Kravitz coming out. We yes. have uh, dancers and brown oh, ballerinas. Uh, Aretha uh, Franklin tribute. tribute. Song and dance. Aretha it is Franklin. a massive event. And now this all our stuff is on the website. All the yes, stuff is on the website. Give them a big round of applause, everybody. Thank we you love you guys. So thank you for taking care of our team. Alicia Gibson, Jay Cox, uh, founder and executive director, the Power of You team. All right. <laughs> <Ashley McClellan. laughs> Bowie, co director, the Power of You teens. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. We love thank you guys. Thank you. 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 So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek.
And welcome back. I'm your host, Dr. Bob Lee. Our next guest is the CEO of No FICO Score Group. Mm -hmm. She was here before, no stranger to the show, and joins us. She's going to join us for a look at the, an understanding of the credit, the basics of credit. We welcome Gail Allen. Give her a big round of applause, everybody. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Good to be back, Thank Bob. Thank you. Oh, you're always welcome. You always come with some great information mm -hmm. for our community. Tell us uh, about what you're working on now. Well, what we're looking at now is the market. It seems to be a change. It's not as, uh, it isn't escalating as it was, let's say, three, four, five, six months ago. It's and slowed down a little it's bit? It's slowing down a little bit. And we're finding homes that have been uh, purchased and renovated are now sitting on the market. So oh. this is a good time for people to get out oh. and buy. If you see something you like for eight fifty, seven fifty, four fifty, or for four hundred, three ninety five, you know, go in there low and and let them lift you up. Yeah, but, but we have a lot of people that are just starting out and they they want to know more about uh, how do I get out of renting an apartment? And what's the benefits of it? What's the the purpose of it and how can I benefit from it and all those things. Well, not how do you start off on the ground level? This, well, first of all, you got to look at your credit, yeah. okay? And you have to be honest with yourself, you know. Uh, have you been sloppy with payments or, or was there an illness? You would have to look at your history because that's what the lenders are going to look at. Yeah. And what I do is I help people sit down and look at their credit and assess where they've been and where they are and where they like to go. Okay, if you have a FICO score of something like 625, 640, you can still buy a home. But it's best to have a FICO score of 680, 700, 680. because the rates are a lot better. Yeah. And you never want to get caught. Talking about? We're talking about interest rates. Interest rates, interest exactly. Rate. They hit you with the highest rate, sometimes like loan shocking. Almost. Well, you know, we're... 25, 26%. That's a lot of money. It, well, I mean, we're not doing that. We're talking about FHA, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and we're talking about interest rates around four and a half, uh, five. Those credit card rates, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're talking about credit card yeah. rates. Oh, my God. <laughs> that would run you out of the house. But, but, but if you have bad, it's the same, almost the same thing if you have terrible credit or credit that's not too Well, these good. days, the if you have bad credit, really terrible credit, but you've been good for 12 months. 12 you, months. You can do an FHA loan, 3.5% uh, down. 3.5% is that fixed? Absolutely. Uh, yes, one to four family. Okay? And uh, you can ask the seller. Let's, let's say you're the seller. I can come to you and say, Bob, I know you want to sell your home for six fifty. Uh, can you pay for my closing? Up to six percent. You can do it. Uh -huh. So that's less money. And then there are also programs. Okay, you can make a deal with the seller. Absolutely. Yeah. The seller wants to sell. You, you get with a realtor yeah. or uh, I call myself a, a real estate consultant and advisor yeah. because I speak to people about no matter what type of situation you're in, if you come to a realtor, realtors want to do one thing, sell or, or, or uh, you know, uh, buy, you know, they want you to buy or sell. Right, right. If you go to a mortgage broker, they want you to refinance or purchase something, okay? But if you come to a real estate consultant, such as my company, the No FICO School Group, what we do is what's best for you. Uh -huh. Maybe you should modify. Maybe you should move out of the house because you lost your job and rent the property yeah. out and lease an apartment uh -huh. until you can get back on your feet again. Yeah. That's what we wow. do. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. She has the strategies, ladies and gentlemen. Give her another big round of applause. <laughs> but wait, we're not letting you go yet. Okay. Give us some tips. Well, if you want to buy a home, first thing you have to do is look at your credit. There are three steps. And then you look at the employment, how much money you really, really make. So you make uh, 80000 150000 uh, gross. You have to look at how much you're bringing home. Yeah. The rule of thumb is 2.5%, you know, times your salary, your wages. And that's what the banks are looking at well, also? The, that's what the banks are yeah. looking at. You know, but then again, you have to consider how much debt you're carrying. And I would deduct from that. Right. Then again, it's not that easy because if you buy one to four family, you can use the other units ah. to help you qualify. And that's income in your pocket. And that's what we do. We help people decide how ah. are you going to get into home ownership. That's a strategy right if there. If you're in home ownership, how do you stay? You know, yeah. if you run into trouble, you buy a house, you bought a house two years ago, you, your, your job downsized, you got laid off, what do you do? Well, sometimes you can rent out rooms. Sometimes, you, well, you, yes, you can. You can rent out rooms. Uh -huh. uh, you, sometimes you can rent out the uh, garage. All right, maybe there's a trucker in the area that wants you until you Walt can get Disney back. Got Got, he wrote all of, a lot of his stuff right on the, in the top garage. of the garage. That's right. Yeah. And so there are ways of staying in your home. 
If you're in trouble, call me, 973-389-3347. Say it again. And 973-389-3347. I'm going to write it down here, 973. 389-3347. What exchange is that, 973? New Jersey? That's Jersey, yes. And you can reach me by email at letgailhelpyou at gmail.com. That's G-A-I-L. I like that. Let, Let Gail, Gail help, you. help you at gmail.com. And if you're in trouble with your mortgage, what we're offering is if you call me, I will send out a free loan modification guidance to yeah, you, yeah. which will, it's, it's uh, in PowerPoint. And you'd be surprised. A lot of people don't know what to do upon finding out that they're in trouble with their mortgage well, and then they let the whole thing go. They panic. Yeah. And that's the worst thing you can do. The first thing you do is call your lender. You start, you engage in a conversation, and then you call Gail Allen. Hey. Because I will sit down with you and tell you basically where you are, show you your financial picture, and then we'll agree on a path yeah. to success. So you'll say to the person, look, straighten up. <laughs> Here's what you do. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, here's step one. Absolutely. Let's do this. And, Let's and, and take and them right through it. You and, walk with them side well, by side. That, that's right. You hold a hand. Well, sometimes that's what you need. If you're going to go to court, for example, and you don't know what to take with you, you can't you afford $5,000 or $10,000 for an attorney, then you want to call someone that can tell you, okay, you got to bring your financial statement, yeah. you got to uh, bring your, your, your uh, pay stubs, and you have to uh, bring a, uh, a letter, a hardship letter telling you exactly what happened, and be able to... Document it. You know, last yeah. year I had an operation. Show them, go to court and show the judge, yeah, this is what, this is my hospital bill, yeah, you know? Yeah. And the judge will, you know, look at the, uh, sometimes look at the uh, bank and say, listen, you have to be a little more lenient. <laughs> yeah. Let's do a forbearance. Let's do a modification. Let's see what happens six oh, months from now. Oh, that's how you do it. That's how you do so it. So you have to prepare before you get there. You prepare every, everything. You want to buy a home? Prepare your credit. You want to refinance? Look at your debt. Prepare your credit. So if somebody has bad credit right now, what, how do they start fixing that? Well, the first thing you do is if you have a co-signer, maybe you were going with a lady, you were in love with her, Bob, and, um, uh, and, may, and you co-signed for her brand new car. I don't know. Uh -huh. And maybe when you broke up, she said, I'm not making the payments. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. And so what you have to do is when you check your credit, you've got to check her credit. You have to make sure that she's been on time. Okay, if she's on time, you're good. If she's not on time, well, you got to find a way of getting your name, <laughs> your name you over that debt. for a little while? For a little while, you got to talk nice to baby. <laughs> that's, that's one thing that'll help your relationship a little bit better, right? <laughs> that's right. Well, let's get back in here until we fix this credit. Until we, we fix can, the credit. Know. And then, of course, the, uh, the third thing you have to do is look at your down payment. How much money do you really have to put down? Yeah. You know, there are programs, and if you call me, I'll tell you, they will give you the money for the down payment. Uh -huh. They will give you the money for your closing costs. They'll do everything but make you get up and go to work to pay for it. There you go. Give a big round of applause, everybody. <laughs> Gail Allen, CEO of the No FICO Score Group. Thank yes, you. indeed. Thank uh, you. You have a website we can go to? No, I don't have a website right now. But, but this I, is I the can... number, 973. 389-3347. And you can write me, email me for that free guidance at let Gail help you at gmail.com. <laughs> I love you. Thank Always you for all the pleasure. information. All right, we'll take a quick break. Thank you, Gail. Take a quick break. I got more next. On hold.
Nash. Yes, sir. Welcome, 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 welcome back. On October the 6th, another October 6th date, Cash Cache. Cache Dance Studios will hold their Dancing for a Cure event to raise awareness for breast cancer. And joining us with all the details, we have event coordinator Marie Ragnow. Hi, how are you? Welcome, 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 welcome you. to the show. So this is going to take place on October the 6th. Where's yeah. it going to be? It's at the Cache Dance Studios, 1379 Commerce Avenue in the Bronx. Commerce Avenue. What is that next to? Uh, UFT, United Federation of Teachers. Oh, right, 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 right. Okay, right. right. There. Oh, I know Not exactly. Not too far from Westchester Square. Affinity Health Plan used to be in that area? Right? Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. they did. I remember yes. that. I, I know exactly where that is. Not too far yeah. from Westchester Square. Yeah. Then they got the Spanish food place across the street over there. <laughs> Up the block. I know where that is, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you started this when? The first time we started this was, um, our first walk was actually in 2013. Uh -huh. uh, one of the very good friend of ours, she was diagnosed in the end of 2011. Yeah. And she let us know in 2012. So when the walk came up in 2013, we walked. And there were six of us that first year. And um, two years ago, we had 106 people. Last bigger, year, bigger. we had 86. Oh, it yeah. gets big, it, but we raised a lot of money, which was really uh -huh. good. So last year, we raised the most, uh, $10,664, which was great for us. Good, good, good. Yeah, so. so this year, what are we doing? You, you have a target goal? Our target goal, again, is $10,000. Um, this is one of our bigger fundraisers, Dancing for a Cure. Um, it's great. This year, we're going to have a dollar dance where you can buy dances with some of our dancers. We sell food. Um, it's salsa, bachata, cha-cha. Um, it's a great time. We I, have fun doing it. Oh, we always and have you're gonna fun. And you're going to be helping people. That's one of the yeah. reasons why. When people are having a good time, they're going to give you some money for it. So we have a good time, raise money to fight breast cancer, which affects men and women. Yeah. So um, this, is our, this is our opportunity to give back to the community to save some lives. Because last year, we actually had another lady from our organization named Denise who was also diagnosed with breast cancer. Yeah, so yeah. it's hitting home to everybody. So yeah. everybody has a story of somebody they know. Everybody has a story. Yeah. Yeah. So, th so this is great. So, um, you've been working in this area for a while, um, and the, the people that you 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 want to let everybody know that they can participate in this. Absolutely. Um, it's from from nine to two on October sixth. It's open to everybody. It's fifteen dollars to get in. Um, again, food, drink is being sold. Um, we sell raff we not, no raffles this year. Um, you come in, you have a good time, you dance, you wear your pink. We ask everybody to wear your pink. You get a little pink bandana from us yeah. this year. Um, it's important to show your support because you may have know someone. You may have had breast cancer yourself. Yeah. You know someone who has a family member or somebody you work with might have had it or something like that. So you want, yeah. it affects a lot of people that you really don't realize. And, and we'll have fun helping people. There's yeah. a young man that's working up in the control room. His name is FM mm -hmm. and he can dance. And you said you're gonna have that dollar dance, right? Yes. I could see him like dollars <laughs> all over, like a fat, like feather, like a chicken. Well, actually, so it's he can he can be a person that can help you raise a lot of money. It's actually three dollars a dance, but we put the dollar you in quotes. You can put three dollars. <laughs> we put the dollar in quotes. It's actually three dollars a yeah. dance, two for five. Okay. Um, and we have um, some friends from the studio that are coming in and offering, volunteering their time to dance with whoever wants yeah. to dance with them for and a so period of two hours. We're yeah. gonna give up a camera. Everybody, give her a big round of applause. <laughs> Thank and you. clap real fast like that. Thank you. You're the first on the show today to get a camera to okay. ask for what you want. You need money, you need volunteers. Tell me what you want. Use that camera right there. Oh, we would like, we would love to have raffles. So if anybody's anything they'd like to donate to us to raffle off. If you want to come and walk with us, please do our walk is October 21st. Um, if you want to donate money, reach out to us on Instagram, Cache Studio Teams. Reach out to us on Facebook, Cache Dance Studios Team Life. That's the name of our team. We would love for you to come out and support. Just come out and have a good time because you being there, paying your $15 gives us a lot of money too, so toward our ultimate goal. So. And so you're looking for $10,000. Yeah, we actually have a couple other events going on for the rest of the year. We have a flag football game we're going to do, Spades Dominoes tournament we're going to do, and ladies going to have a go paint Go back night. to that camera right there and ask if there's a corporation out there that can help you out. Oh, anybody who would love to help us out, we would be more than willing. Please reach out to us, Instagram, Facebook. My name is Marie. I'll be happy to talk to you and see what you can do with us, and we'll be happy to show your sponsorship at our studio. And keep that picture right on Marie. Keep, keep it on Marie. You see that open right over the top of her head? She's open to any amount <laughs> right about now. Yes, I am. Okay. Absolutely. And where did they send it again? Cache Dance Studios, Team Life on Facebook, and Cache Studios Team on Instagram. Love Marie to have right you come now. out. now. Give a big round of applause, everybody. Event coordinator, Dancing for a Cure. Yes. Thank you so much for coming. Thank, Thank you. you for Appreciate it.
All right, Marie, we got to take a quick break, but uh, we'll be right back with more. Now. Thank you. Open up your books to page 360. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Talking about inspirational quotes. You got to believe in yourself. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise, Louise, can you give me an example of an inspirational quote? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at GetSchool.com. How can I help my daughter with her reading? Searching for help with Dachshund Reading. No. <laughs> Let me try. Sarah's bright, but when she's reading, she has trouble sounding out words. Playing world music. What? I give up. Wait, I was trying to show you how Sarah feels every day. Frustrating, isn't it? Redirecting to understood.org. Join parents and experts at understood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues to help your child thrive. We begin on the NFL gridiron where the New York football Giants suffered a setback Sunday at MetLife Stadium. They were within a score late in the fourth quarter, but New Orleans sealed the deal on another drive and route to a 32-18 victory. The loss dropped the G-men to 1-3. Here's head coach Pat Shermer and quarterback Eli Manning. You just keep working. You just keep working and you play your way out of it and you coach your way out of it, period. That's what you do, and that's the reality of it, and that's what I trust that our guys and our coaches do. You know, got off to a good start, had a good drive. I thought, you know, we were, you know, capable of moving the ball and making plays on this team. We just, um, you know, just weren't able to do it. Got, you know, got in some third and longs in the first half that we didn't, you know, didn't convert on. They had some good calls. They had some good plays. Um, you know, they were going to make us, uh, they weren't going to give us anything deep. They were trying to, you know, take away all the deep stuff, make us throw underneath, and that's fine. We were just going to have some long drives, and, and just keep playing that way. And, uh, you know, there's a few times they kind of knocked us out of uh, good down and distance. And, and um, you know, we weren't able to uh, sustain some drive. Things don't look all that good. The Giants seem destined to miss the playoffs for the sixth time in seven years. But I still have faith in Manning and Big Blue. The Giants look better than a year ago. They have a new coach and a lot of new faces. They'll need to get it together next Sunday in Carolina. Meanwhile, the New York Jets didn't look much better down in Jacksonville. Blake Bortles threw two touchdown passes as the Jags handed the Jets a 31-12 drumming. Jacksonville head coach and Bronx native Doug Marone even attempted a two-point conversion in the final seconds against the Jets, albeit failed showing little respect for Gang Green, despite noting afterward that no swipe was intended. Yeah, right. The Jets are 1-3. and three. On the baseball diamond, the New York Mets capped the regular season Sunday in a 1-0 victory over Miami. Noah Syndergaard pitched a complete game shutout, and Todd Frazier provided the only RBI the Amazons needed. It was a nice victory to close out the season, but it paled in comparison to Saturday night's tribute to Captain David Wright. The Mets won in extras on a walk-off from Austin Jackson. It was an emotional evening for Wright and the Mets. The captain got his last start in orange and blue with Wright manning the hot corner and longtime teammate Jose Reyes getting the start at shortstop. We go back inside the locker room for more. But this, this was surreal, um, and Jeff, uh, you know, spearheaded this, this, this thing, and I mean, it was uh, coming to the ballpark, I didn't know quite what to expect. Um, I knew things were going to be special when I pulled into the parking lot, and there were probably, I don't know, five or six dozen fans waiting outside um, the, the, the parking lot. Uh, I think that's when it kind of hit me that um, this was going to be a an awesome night. I think that's uh, the best way that I could put it is, is tonight was, it was awesome. He exceeded all those expectations that I had on him, uh, on the type of guy he was. 
Um, he's really authentic in what you see in the media. That's the type of guy he is in the clubhouse as well. Uh, it was just a special moment, for, you know, for me, and I know it was for everybody else. But um, you know, you know, I grew up watching watching this guy and. and uh, you know, watching how hard he played the game, and he played playing the game the right way, and um, you know, he's he was just really a, a role model for everybody. We're very, very proud uh, to have him as one of ours, and I got to tell you that the fans uh, couldn't have been better, couldn't have been more gracious, uh, and it was just great to be here and really fun to watch uh, how this whole night played out and uh, all the hard work that went into it for David to just get back to this point to be able to be out there in the, in the big league field. So really proud of all that and uh, can't thank everybody enough and especially the fans who came out tonight to see David. Is there one moment above all else that you think is going to really stick with you about this night? I mean, I would say the fans, you know, m my teammates, um, I, I held up good until um, until I saw Mickey come out, and that, that kind of hit me. And uh, then I turn around, and I see our bullpen coming onto the field, and I saw all the guys from the dugout come onto the field. And for a split second, I kind of looked around the stadium, and I saw all the signs and uh, the ch heard the chants, and everything kind of hit you at once. And I was like, God, here we go again. You know, here we go again. So uh, I think I held up OK, but um, you know, certainly emotional for me. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, one of the best, uh, most loving experiences, you know, I think that, that, that I've ever been a part of. That was, that was something special. It's likely the end of the road for both Wright and Reyes, the final two players on the Mets roster who played at Shea Stadium. It was a fitting tribute to Wright who battled numerous injuries just to get back to the field. He's one of the game's good guys and will be missed in that locker room. I could see Wright making a great manager one day. He would be a player manager, no doubt about it. The Yanks fell in the season finale in Boston. The Red Sox won 10-2 Sunday. Boston finishes the season with 108 victories. The Yanks went 162 and broke the all-time record for homers doing so Saturday second base McGlaber Torres is two run homer and the fourth inning gave the Yankees number 265 New York tied the 1997 Seattle Mariners record of 264 in Friday's win over the Red Sox while clinching home field for the American League wildcard game against the Oakland Athletics the pinstripers would hit two more before the season wrapped and that included another blast from Luke Voigt Sunday and the final homer of the regular season from John Carlos Stanton on Saturday. Stanton has been plunked plenty of times, but by his own home run ball, the Yanks star homered over the green monster on Saturday, connecting in the seventh inning. Stanton then got quite a surprise from a strong armed fan while round, rounding second base at Fenway Park. Shades of rookie of the year. Stanton was hit rounding the bases. You got to check it out on YouTube to watch the replay of that one. Time for some quick hitters from around the world of sports and MLS action. The New York Red Bulls topped Atlanta FC 2-0. The Red Bulls return on October 6th against San Jose. NYCFC and DC United will meet on October 21st as the regular season is winding down. The NBA preseason is gearing up. The Knicks and Washington play tonight. That game is in DC. The Knicks and the Nets play Wednesday in Brooklyn. That will be the first game of the preseason for the Nets. The NHL regular season is also upon us. The Rangers skate against Nashville in the season opener Thursday night at the world's most famous arena. Puck drops at 7.30 p.m. at Madison Square Garden. The Islanders begin their season Thursday night in Carolina. The Devils will host Edmonton in New Jersey Saturday. In motor racing, Lewis Hamilton can't be stopped in Formula One. He bested the field yesterday in the Russian GP. Those are the headlines. We hit the C-list for my American League Rookie of the Year. Earlier in the season, I thought the AL Rookie of the Year would come down to Shohei Otani and Glaber Torres, but as the season unfolded and injuries to both Otani and Torres occurred, it became clear to me that Miguel Andujar 
was the one rookie that's never slowed down. And Duhar surpassed Yankee royalty on Saturday, belting his 45th double of the season to break Joe DiMaggio's franchise record for two baggers by a rookie, which he set all the way back in 1936. And Duhar is among the favorites to win the AL Rookie of the Year award and leads all first-year players with 170 hits, 92 RBIs, as well as the 47 doubles, which tied Fred Lynn for the AL Rookie record. He's also second with 27 homers as he battles the Angels two-way threat Otani for the award. And Duhar is also one of just three Yankee rookies to hit 27 homers, joining Aaron Judge, who hit 52 a year ago, and DiMaggio's 29. I realize I might be biased, but I really believe Miguel deserves the honor. He has the stats, and to be honest, the Yankees wouldn't be in the position they are in without him and Torres for that matter. They'll host Oakland Wednesday night. I'm sure Ann Duhar doesn't care very much about the Rookie of the Year award. He's more focused on the more important important trophy, the World Series trophy. That quest begins Wednesday night against the surging A's who won 97 games more than any other National League team. I think the Yanks could win it all, no doubt, and I hope Ann Duhar gets his credit, too. That's your sports. I'm Bobby C. Dr. Bob, Yanks, A's, Wednesday night. Who's taking it in the Bronx? Who's going to take it? I think we were all hoping that the Yankees win, and but how far are you a great predictor? You, you said David so Wright's going to go. He's going to be a player though. coach. But uh, you think Hard the Yankees would take it all away? You know, I think that I think they can. I mean, I, I said last week on the show that I thought they had the best roster of all the teams left in the playoffs. But that one game playoff is always really tricky. Yeah, yeah. Woo. Well, we do hope they go all the way. Absolutely. Yeah, It'd be yeah, great. Yeah. Another championship here in the Bronx. Number 28, the quest for 28. Oh, everybody give Bobby C a big round of applause. <laughs> Bobby, thank you. We love what you do. We love See your you work. next Monday. All right. We'll take a break. We'll be back with more next. Patriotism. It inspires passionate debate. It's worn like a badge of honor with good reason. Because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love. Love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels because love has no labels. Did you know kids who play outdoors have healthier lungs? Totally. I did. Did you know that boys that play with dolls make better husbands? My son has lots of dolls. But did you know terry cloth diapers breathe better? I did. Mm -hmm. It's totally true. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you know that strollers have the right of way on the sidewalk? Yes. Yep, I did. Did you guys Did know? you know that kids who eat breakfast have higher GPAs? Yeah, I know. Okay. Yeah. Actually, what I was going to say. Did you know babies should never touch silver? It's really bad for them. I knew that. Did you guys know that statistically friendly kids have more friends? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's obvious. Did you know most people think they're using the right car seat for their kid, but they're not? Parents who really know it all know for sure that their child is in the right seat at the right age and size. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to make sure your child is protected. I'm putting that on my blog. I just put it in mine. Hi, I'm David Lesh, legal correspondent to the morning show Open. If you have a legal question that you'd like me to answer, please. Send me an email at davidlesh at bronxet.org, and I will address it on our Ask Your Lawyer segment. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome back, everybody. On October the 11th, an anti-bullying coalition will take place. And joining us with all the details, we have Anthony Otten Cruz. Or should I say Cruz? Cruz. <laughs> Cruz. <laughs> and Cruz Fuchsman. Yes. And from the New York uh, Psychotherapy and Community Liaison, we welcome you guys. And we also have uh, Anthony. All right, well, we said Anthony on. Well, tell us about the, the work that you guys are doing. Yeah, thank you so much for having us in the program. Yeah, we actually um, uh, run an outpatient mental health clinic in the South Bronx on, mm -hmm. on Cortland Avenue. And so we do a lot of work in the schools. We do a lot of presentations and workshop. And we have a lot of contact with parents. And uh, throughout the years, we have echoed the same issues about bullying uh -huh. and parents not knowing um, where to go or sometimes even how to recognize the issue of bullying, how to address it. So we thought that was time for us to really take the stand 
and um, yeah. discussed it with our administrator, our boss, and said that we needed to do more than just going to the school and providing you know, information. We needed to come yeah. together as a community. And it's big everywhere, and it's even everywhere. online, right? Online, mm -hmm. yeah, cyberbullying. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So well, people, how did, how did you start this? So people we, just wanted to... So people just wanted to be, to do something, and people didn't know really what to do. And we said, why don't we just start a coalition? We invite our community partners, our people that we work with, community members, residents in the community. So we yeah. approached Father Skelly from the Immaculate Concession Church yeah. on Melrose, and he was on board with us. So Thank you, Father. <laughs> Father <laughs> Skelly was amazing. Yeah. So he said, yes, you can use you can use my church. Then we approached other community-based organizations, the Union um, Community Health Center, um, Serena Munoz, and the Bronze Educational Center, and the right. Bronze Legal Services and the uh, destination tomorrow. So we got a leader from each of those organizations who brought them to the table and said, you know, let's do it. Let's and do we just it. plan it. Yeah, uh -huh. it's, it's, already, it's already happening. And then you went up to Dave. You said, Dave, yeah. I need your help. <laughs> yes. And Dave, <laughs> the you came and said, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Correct. Uh -huh. I think that the most important thing is not just to create something, but how do the word is, is spread? How do people really know yeah. that this is really happening, right? We need a you. We need a, every neighbor, every organization in the, in the South Bronx to really um, help, you know, hold our hand. Um, yeah. this, this coalition is, is born in the South Bronx, but the goal is to create a lot of clusters. Yeah, and so there will be a cluster throughout the Bronx, throughout throughout the Bronx, Bronx. Yeah. to different districts. And we yeah. have heard a lot of interest from a lot of the elected officials, so we really feel like we are right now. Yeah, because this a good is place. worldwide. You know, if, yep. you, if you include cyberbullying, you know, people can jump on you from anywhere Absolutely. in the world and they're hiding behind the internet. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, Dave, you want to you want, yeah, again, you want to talk sure. about you can destroy someone's reputation within seconds. Yeah. You know, so it's a big issue all throughout the nation. Yeah. So and we're gonna address it with this coalition. So when she came to you, this touched your heart. Were you bullied? Oh no, I wasn't bullied, but you, you know, were I the do. Bully? I, no, I was not the bully either. I was actually in a neutral position, but <laughs> but you know, I did feel her passion, and I'm also passionate about it as well. So yeah. I just, we just really want to come together and tackle bullying because yeah. a lot of people, uh, we deal with a lot of people, and we see a lot of people go through these things, yeah. especially our children in our schools. And David and Cruz, you know, when you, when we talk about bullying, we're not only talking about the person who's bullied upon or being bullied. The person that the, the bully, bully has a big problem. Well, studies have shown that a lot of the kids that are bullied, they were victims. And one of the reasons why they became uh, uh, the bully was because at one point they were hurt themselves. Yeah. And we are not only uh, taking care of the victim, we're also taking care of the bully themselves because they too go into a lot of struggle. Exactly. A lot yeah. of these children come from homes where they're broken homes, there's, there's just not parental support for whatever reason. So it's about really educating. And one more thing about this bullying issue is that it's starting their home. Yeah. So it's really, you know, parents do not know sometimes how to identify that this is a yeah. bullying behavior. But one of the uh, goals of the coalition is to really provide a lot of education about this issue, that you know what is it. So and what your parents look for. Exactly. What? Well, you know, siblings. A nine-year-old, you know, uh, a five-year-old bullying the nine-year-old. And, you know, in some of our culture, we say, like, oh, come on now. That's your little brother. Oh, you know, so it just could be take right it. Own home. Exactly, yeah. it's in our home. It's okay because it's your four-year-old. And then when the five-year-old find out that it's okay at home, who will stop him yeah. or her in the school? Yeah. If I can do it at home, why can I do it here? There were seven of us in the house, so you know, <laughs> we, everybody was fighting. But you know something, <laughs> bullying, bullying is not a really an, an old, yeah. a new issue. Bullying is an old issue, but it's now is the intensity of what is it? And now, before you had a little issue with your brother, your sister. Or your friend, you got a little fight, it's over, squash. It's over, squash. Now it's, it's going through the phone, it's going yeah. to the media, it's, it's, evolving. it's involving. So it's really. And sometimes that, that the person who's being bullied comes back and does something drastic. So that's all yeah, because if you don't have. We need people like you. Exactly. If you don't have the outlet, if I'm, if I'm going through this on a daily basis and I don't have anyone to talk to, and maybe my partners are very good people, but they had three jobs to yeah. keep these little seven of us going. Yeah. And so where do you go? Who's going to listen to you? Who gonna understand? And so in, in some in our culture, you know, uh, being uh, uh, taking the abuse is okay. Oh, you, you man up now, man up. You can, you know, really, it's, it's only so much that you can man that's, up. That's right, uh, Anthony. Are there other organizations out there helping you guys do what you need to do? Yeah. So she uh, mentioned earlier that we did are working with and partnering with uh, Union Community Health Center, uh, with and also the Bronx Educational Opportunity Center. 
-hmm. Bronx Legal Services, yeah. Destination Tomorrow, and the Suicide Institute. Yeah, and also write down on that paper right now, the United Federation of Teachers, UFT, they have a big anti-bullying program. You may want to give them a call and have them back you, back to get together. And awesome, yeah. yeah. We're really looking for more uh, partners. This is just really the beginning the of beginning. what we are really, we had a, like a blank canvas and now we just, Putting, adding, adding colors on it. So we're really hoping a lot of organizations and community residents can come together because we want this coalition to be spearheaded by the youth yeah, eventually. Like yeah. What do you have here? So this is the flyer that That's we- That's the kickoff uh, meeting? Yes. Um, okay. It's gonna be at 10 o'clock on October 11 at the Immaculate Concession Church. Um, there's gonna have breakfast uh -huh. and there's gonna be a panel uh -huh. um, of you know, individuals that are gonna be talking about the issue and then we're gonna break into groups and we're just gonna prepare you know, the, uh, the path okay. for this you know, amazing and Beautiful, course. and for people who are watching, is there a website they can go to? Yes, they can go to the uh, nypcc.org. Uh, uh -oh. NY PCC, NYPCC. You down with NYPCC? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> NYPCC.org. <laughs> yes, and we are, the registration is through Eventbrite. If you look it up, you will find this to register. And so we're hoping to see a lot of people on that day. Well, thank you guys so much. Give them a big round of applause, everybody. Anthony, thank you. Uh, thank you. New York Psychotherapy and Counseling Center, Community Outreach Specialist, and Cruz Fuchsman, New York Psychotherapy and Counseling Center, Senior Community Outreach and Organizer. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for coming down. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today's show. I'd like to thank our guest, you, for tuning in and, ch and checking it all out. Uh, and if you missed any part of today's show, well, you can tune into the Recablecast of Open at 5 or 10 p.m. Watch anytime on the web at bronxnet.org or you can catch an all new episode Wednesday at 10 a.m. with our host, Darren Hyman. For all of us here at Bronx that have a great and enjoyable day, and always remember this, what you are is God's gift to you, and what you make of yourself is your gift to God. So choose your choice, let your choice control the chooser of the Dr. Bob Lee. I'll catch you another day, another way. In fact, I'll see you on the radio tonight over 107.5 WBLS. Peace.